So welcome everybody. Uh, this is our, I think our actually very first um, Spooky Do for Beginners class uh, with somebody, my name is Ingrid Dinter and uh, the beautiful Penny Yu, which a lot of you already know because she probably has answered a gazillion questions that you guys had um, patiently and expertly. And um, yeah, we just uh, were asked to do this together. Um, I think it's kind of a good combination because um, in order for me as a beginner to understand Spooky 2, I was a beginner two years ago, so I'm not a beginner anymore, but I had to really dumb this down quite a bit. You know, I had to really <laughs> kind of focus on, all right, where do I want to go with this? Um, and, uh, you know, just try to learn how to use the software. Um, Penny, do you want to say something before we get started with this? Just to say... Um, hello and thank you. You take a long um, time to prepare it. We uh, ho host Spooky Team and the users uh, say thank you to you. Oh, happy to do it. You know, sometimes um, it's, it makes fun to create something that you wish you'd had for yourself. And again, the reason for that, um, well, one thing we're going to figure out a little bit is we have and actually printed this out. You guys, there is a PowerPoint to go along with this, okay? And it has, if I'm not mistaken, 61 slides. Now, chances are you're going to get real bored with me if I show them to you, even though I spent many, many hours on putting them together. So we want to keep this entertaining and fun for you as well, okay? So um, let me just see um, if I can... Um, there, there are a couple of things I would like to do. So first of all... Um, let me see if I if I go into and just share the screen really quick. And one of the reasons why this is important is, you guys, um, actually, there is a discount coupon code that you can get. Um, all of you are on on this uh, on this webinar, so just put your email address in there and let the team know where you want this to be sent. Okay, just go to the chat box and pop that in there. Um, so this is going to be an introductory course. My name is Ingrid Dinter. I am a private user of Spooky2, and I really want you guys to see this, that I said this, um, because I think this is important for you to know. So I am uh, basically just like you. I'm not affiliated with Spooky2. I certainly don't get commissions for doing anything. You know, Spooky2 doesn't do commissions anyways, but I'm also not you know, getting paid for anything like this. I'm not a medical doctor, not a licensed mental health professional, none of that, okay? You will not get medical advice today as much as I'm sorry to tell you, but uh, there's a reason for that later that you will see. You will not get medical advice. Um, talk to your doctor, mental health professional about that. Um, and uh, this is also not meant to be a sales presentation. Please don't take it in any way, shape or form like that. It's not like somebody here will try to shove one technology or the other down your throat. Whatever you do is your choice, but you need to know what Spooky2 can do, what Wi-Fi can do, if that does something for you that you need at this time, if it's worth your money and your time and your effort. Um, so you're not going to get a sales pitch. You will get a coupon if you want one, but that's really where that ends. Um, and as I already said, the beautiful Penny Yu is the um, expert for all your complicated questions. Um, so what we want to do today is, and this is really important to me right now. Um, let me just see if I can move this over. Um, we want to help you guys get started and gain confidence. And what that means is that a lot of people... Um, what I've also, what I've seen personally from the forums that I mentor um, and also attend, I see a lot of people, they just don't dare to get started. And that's a problem. Okay, actually, let me just stop the screen sharing a little bit again, so, because I, I think my mouse isn't working. That's a problem. Hold on, why is my mouse not working? There's something weird going on with this. I don't know why my mouse isn't working. All right. So we're just going to roll with it the way that it is. This should be working though. Okay, let's see if that changed later. Um, a lot of you are really kind of struggling with just getting started. You're trying to, and this is, this is really something I would like to, for you guys to understand. You are trying to understand the car instead of learning how to drive it. Does that make sense? 
you are really trying to understand the everything there is to know about Spooky instead of just using the software and the hardware and the components for what you need it to do for you. And as that happens, you stop yourself in your own tracks. Okay, and in this webinar today, we want to help you get started and just learn how to drive the car, how to get from A to B. Um, Penny, I have a problem here. I don't know what my mouse is doing. Do you know at all how I can change this? I cannot get in here. Hold on. I can, I can change the PowerPoint, but for some reason, I cannot change. I don't know what this is. Hold on. Let me find out. This is... Well, maybe it's right there. Hold on. Ah, here we go. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to... This doesn't work either. Ha! Huh, look at that. Okay. Anyway. So, um, what we want to do today is we want to make sure that we keep it simple for you guys. All right? I hope that makes, that makes sense to you. Um, one of the first things, and let's just hope that the, that the mouse works in a second. One of the first things I actually would like to do, and um, Penny, I, um, I hope you agree with that. I would like for people to actually just get a quick look at what resources there actually are for them. Because what I'm seeing is that a lot of people really don't know where to look when they get started with Spooky 2. They just say, okay, I got this box, and so now what do I do? Right. And it makes sense to know what, what's there and what you can use. So actually, let me do the whole screen sharing thing again um, and just trust that it works this way. OK, you guys are awesome. And uh, we now have already have 160, almost 160 people on the call. So that's really, really cool. Um, so let me just go ahead really quickly again and share my screen. Because I want you to see um, what what their hold on let me just do it this way okay um are we on, on the desktop now yes okay so can you see my screen right now yeah we can, can you see okay cool so guys listen this is actually pretty pretty easy again there are um a couple of websites that you really need to know about and they are a little bit different Okay, one of them is basically the spooky2.com website. This is where you start. And it's a really big deal because a lot of you might not even know that this website has been completely redone. It's straightforward, it's simple. It shows you with lots and lots and lots of videos where to begin. You click on this and it starts the next video. It explains you what is the Rive machine. It explains to you how does it work. Obviously, the incredible mastermind John White has, uh, this is John White, obviously, I'm sure you guys know that. He has created all these amazing videos for you, step by step by step. And all you need to do is really take a long afternoon and just sit down and start playing with this and look at this, okay? If you're new to Rive, that's where you begin. If you're new to Spooky Tour, uh, too, you can take a tour, you can look at the different, um, the different ways of using Spooky with Plasma, with Contact, you just click on it and it will show you so many resources with videos and it's sorted, it's organized. So it's not that you have to go online and figure this out. This is really all in line and done with you, done for you. So you can, you can really take this like a, like a driver's ad. Step by step, you learn what you need to do. This one happens to be about Plasma but there are other things, others too, you know, contact, remote, cold laser. It teaches you how to do the biofeedback scan. Um, if you want to buy Spooky2, it shows you how to get the generators, what kind of accessories are there. If you want to buy a kit, that means all the things that work together, you find this here as well, all the products. So this is super simple. This website has been completely redone and you guys did an amazing job over there. Bias guide means sometimes people don't know what to use for which, you know, element that they're dealing with. You find answers there. If you say, does this work? Testimonials. It has a great blog. You access the forum from here. The forum is another way of having a community where you can ask your questions. And there are websites in all sorts of languages, you know, and this is all there. And a lot of people, I think, really don't know this. And we need to tell them because once they know this, they feel a whole lot better. 
Um, the second thing that they can <clears throat> take a look at is the Spooky2 Dash Mall website. And I'm here on the, um, let me just go to the homepage. So this is where you buy. And Penny, if I make any mistakes, you just jump right in and tell me, stop it, don't say that. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is a, an even bigger website with lots and lots of uh, 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 different resources. You learn about you know, the products, the mission, everything there is to know. You learn how to get started. And you, here you actually learn it for different protocols as well. You know, If you wanna treat cancer or Lyme or whatever, um, the different products that there are, more testimonials, more resources. Um, a, lot of, a lot of you may not know that there are actually PDF guides, which means printed guides, ready guides that you can just access. You find them on the resources. You access them and you can, you can read up on those questions. What I think is extremely helpful is the blog because the blog has a, an amazing amount of blog posts. Ah, look, there's somebody here. <laughs> um, but it also has a search function and that's right up here, which means that if you have a question, put it in there and there is, a, in my experience, very rarely has a question not been asked before. So you can, you can get an immediate answer. You can also see different ways of getting access to the information that there is. Um, and just starting to take your driver's ad with Spooky2. I hope that makes sense for you, okay? Um, there are, you know, obviously there's a webinar uh, page, then there is um, different ways of getting support. You know, how, if you have a warranty problem, if you wanna order, if you have any other support questions, um, there's, there are many different ways of getting access here. Um, I actually, there was one site page that I think is very interested and interesting and it shows where is this under the different websites, because there's so many different websites here about us, our websites, um, because people get lost. They don't know where to start. You go to get started, uh, you go to about us, you go to our websites. And it tells you the different websites that exist. And it tells you why you should go there. Okay. So if you have a specific question about a specific topic, for example, you would like to see some videos, it's on the video page. If you need to get support in a certain way, or if you want to download the latest updates, you find this here. Okay. So I hope this is helpful for you to just take a look at that. You can click on all these links and you get into a whole new world of information. So um, that is hopefully um, a good start for you guys. And I would like to, let me see. So these are, these are your resources here. Um, <laughs> Then there are Facebook groups, obviously. Most you guys are in those Facebook groups right now. We already know that. Um, there is the forum. I showed you that link earlier um, where you get much more in-depth questions, more complicated questions, not for beginners. There's always Google and YouTube. And you can go to support at spooky2-model.com also to get some questions. Um, so this is really, um, hopefully, a good... A, a, uh, a confidence builder for you guys. <laughs> so you feel uh, that you can do a little more of this. Okay. So remember, Spooky2 is a complex system. Yes, you have to put the time in to learn. You really, it is not, it, it's, it's, uh, it's not necessarily self-explanatory for somebody who's never done this. Neither, by the way, is driving a car right? It's just not. It's not you drive, You buy a car and then you know how to get to Albuquerque. It's not how that works. You buy a car, you learn how to drive the car, you get a map, you make a decision where you want to go, you choose which way you want to go, you get on the road and you see what happens. And if you end up not in Albuquerque, you probably made a mistake, have to go back and find another way. It's kind of like that here, okay? Um, I hope that's okay for you to, to understand that. The, the truth is, um, however, you're not alone. Others have the, the very similar questions than you and, and we're here to help you, okay? Um, I would like to show really quickly a couple of minutes. Actually, no, before we do that, let me just stop the share and let's just see if people had any questions so far. 
Mine is hopefully going to work. Hold on. Yes, there we go. Um, is this okay, so White? Can we just get a thumbs up or something from folks? Um, yeah, the online chat is very helpful. We hear that. Um, Sheila says, is there a way for Spooky2 to do you work without a computer laptop? Well, you need to have the software. And that's not in the, in the, in the generator, that's in the software and on the computer. So the answer is actually no. And we're gonna um, guide you through this process in a moment, a little bit. Um, okay. So the forum is you go to the website that I just showed you and you find the forum there. You can all, uh, the forum is also linked to your software, right? When you're in the Spooky2 software on the very right, that's still true, right? Is that still true? Is the forum still linked to the software? Let me just make sure that this is true here. So what um, basically you can, I just told you, I'm sorry, you guys, you know what? Let me, let me, um, let me backtrack here for a minute. Okay. So people ask, okay. So if you have any questions, like, can we buy the software differently and stuff? That's what our presentation is for. So you will get a better understanding about this in a minute. Um, how do you, but have to go to a page. I don't know how to use it. It all just feels so overwhelming and I'm desperate. A lot of people are in desperate need to heal. Um, that is why we do this webinar. So we hear you. It's difficult. I get it. You can do this. And the way you can do this is step by step. Okay. I want you to know this. The way you start with Spooky 2 is by setting a goal of what you need to learn. And then you simply go ahead and you learn this. Let me show you what Rifing does for a minute. Um, Penny, I have actually downloaded onto my computer a little video from Anthony Holland that just shows how frequencies can actually pop um, mini, you know, like, like uh, uh, um, cancer cells. Can I, is that okay if I just show that for a minute? Okay. I will just go ahead and do that for just one minute. And I hope you guys... Are okay. Going to enjoy that. Okay. So, and here is. Hold on. Let me just move this over. There we go. Okay. Um, okay. And we are at. So this is Anthony Holland. He is. Perhaps you can see the sort of fireworks effect happening. In the growing blister to the right of the organism. And here comes a little neighbor wondering what's going on. So they are shooting frequencies at this um, And you can pathogen. see blisters forming now on the lower left quadrant and upper left quadrant. The shape is now changing. And a major explosion out the top. <clears throat> so now we have some evidence that we can target specific microorganisms with specific frequencies. And we make several more videos and we film the destruction of hundreds of microorganisms. And about this time, we meet a cancer researcher and we show them these videos. And this results in an invitation to spend four months in a cancer research lab trying to shatter cancer cells. This is our setup in the lab. You can see a microscope with cancer cells on it. Here's the plasma tube, and here is my little frequency control box. So first we attack pancreatic cancer. Take a good look at this slide because the next one will look quite different. After we treat these cells, they change their shape and size and they begin to grow long rope-like structures out the sides. They look something like antennas. I call them <clears throat> bioantennas for biological antennas. It's as if the cancer cells are trying to tune in to our signal. It also turns out this is the beginning of a process of destruction for cancer cells. We now know the cancer is vulnerable between the frequencies of 100,000 hertz and 300,000 hertz. So now we attack leukemia cells. 
Leukemia cell number one tries to grow a copy of itself, but the new cell is shattered into dozens of fragments and scattered across the slide. Leukemia cell number two then hyperinflates and also dies. Leukemia cell number three then tries to make another cancer cell. The new cell is shattered and the original cell dies. So I hope this um, helped you understand what you have in your hands. This is a really big deal. Let me just turn this down a little for a minute. So here we are back. Penny, you can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay, good. So you guys, this is basically the technology you have at your hands. This is what it does. You have frequencies in, in your software that you can load into generators, you can shoot it at cells, with different kind of cells, pathogens, and use it for other uh, purposes too. And, um, and it just destroys them, right? And when you know that, why would it not make sense to just really start learning a little bit about how this all works? Yes, we can put the, you can actually just Google, you know, I wanna empower you guys, Google Anthony Holland, who is also, you know, you, you see the name in the, in the presets as well. Um, just Google, uh, um, hold on, Anthony Holland um, at the TEDx in Skidmore. This is one, but also you can just go to John, Wright, uh, to John White's videos and see them there. See, see uh, you know, lots of, lots of information there. So just do that. Um, okay, D do we have any... Uh, yeah, Linda said she's seen it. It's, it's very good. Um, do we have any questions that people have so far? I don't understand how you use the frequency adjustment part in the control tab. I always leave it with the adjustment in the middle. Okay, these are, okay. Um, okay, so actually I'm just getting information from Sam that we should answer questions at the end of the webinar and just keep rolling for now. And I think that's actually a good idea, Sam. Thank you for saying that. Okay, so let me, um, let me do this. Um, I am going to share my screen again a little bit and then we can, um, and then we can take it from there. Okay, so. So what you guys need to know is every living thing vibrates on a specific frequency and matching this frequency can destroy the living thing. Kind of cool, right? Okay, so you know that when you, when a, a glass has a frequency, when you hit that frequency with your voice, the glass will shatter. You can ask your body what makes you sick and you, ask, you can actually also ask your body what it needs to heal. And imagine that you can identify that frequency and bring it into your body and allow the healing to start. This is what Spooky2 does. You can actually, with a biofeedback, ask your body, body, what are you resonating with right now? And a lot of people actually misunderstand this as getting a diagnosis. It's not what it is. Your body doesn't need diagnosis. Your body needs frequencies. <laughs> okay, your body is out of alignment and you need to know where and how. And it will say, well, I react to this and I react to the other. So if you send all these frequencies through your body, spooky, the Spooky2 software can actually measure and record where your body says, you know, pick me, <laughs> I need that. Okay, it puts it into a little program and then you can use your generators and your hardware to bring those frequencies to your body and let it do what needs to be done. This is actually really, really cool. Okay. Um, so there are two things. Remember, this is, this is a beginner's class, right? We can make this really, really complicated, but that's not what this class is for right now. We really want to keep this simple so you guys can get, get a really good start. So Spooky2 can kill pathogens, viruses, bacteria, fungi, mold, and other things. It can kill things off is my point, okay? And it can also transport healing energy to you. It can do biofeedback, it can do detox, it can do 
very interesting things like collodial silver, which means it has the ability to, to break the tiniest particles of silver out of a silver rod and infuse it into water that then becomes a healing agent. We're not going to talk about this today, but it's, it's another option. Um, environmental healing. You can actually kill mold and fungus in your environment by using Spooky2 because all of these things res respond to frequencies. You can even make your own custom remedies, and we can probably talk about this at some later time as well. Okay. So Spooky2 consists of a couple of things. Um, one of those things, uh, the first thing is there's a database. Okay. And again, remember, we keep this simple because people say this is confusing. It's not confusing. There's a database that has all, uh, that has over 54,000 frequencies and program combinations that are constantly being updated for free. You guys, I know other rifing systems, and you know I'm not a salesperson, I'm just telling you this <laughs> because it's true. I know friends of mine who pay for every single update with different systems. We don't pay for those, okay? We buy only the hardware and that's it. And whatever the updates are, are the updates, but there is no payment for this. I hope you understand that that's a big deal. Um, all the, the uh, new coronavirus frequencies, you know, there were people jumping on this and saying, let's put them in the software, but you didn't have to pay for that. It wasn't a little plugin that you, you know, pay $7.99 for. You just get this, okay? Um, so the database is one piece. The frequency generators are the second piece. And then the different ways of transmission devices, which means the way to get the, the, um, the frequencies from the generator onto or into your body. Okay, so that's, that's basically what you need to know. The, the software, um, that's a free download even if you don't buy uh, the, the hardware. Imagine that. That's actually really, really generous because some people, they just want to know what all those frequencies do and they actually download this. In order to, so here's what you need to, to understand. In order to use the software, you need to have Microsoft Windows. Okay, you can use a Mac. I actually use it on my Mac as well, but you need to um, create a partial on your Mac um, hard drive and you need to upload Windows for Mac. And then you can use Spooky. So it's a Windows program. Okay, um, so that is one thing you need to consider. Um, I, they, I have a designated uh, 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 little laptop for my spooky software. I, I think I paid 128 bucks for that refurbished, whatever does what it needs to do. Perfect. So no big deal. Um, now the second thing is, um, because I already read these questions, uh, about, you know, how do you adjust things? You're a beginner. Don't adjust things. <laughs> Just don't. Okay. Don't go to the car, open the hood and see what happens if you twist the screw. It's not necessary. Okay, that doesn't mean it's impossible or it's not allowed, but you need to know what you're doing before you're doing it. And you don't want to take things out of context, right? You don't want to put the screwdriver in and just start seeing what happens if you play around with things. There are people who've actually put this together very expertly and for good reason. <laughs> and we want to make sure we keep it that way. <laughs> you know? So don't touch the generators and play around with the settings on the top. Okay. Just don't. Um, if that happens accidentally, I know that happened to me in the beginning, you just turn it off, turn it back on and it resets itself. So um, the other thing is when you go to your software, there are really only three of the tabs that you need to have in the beginning, the presets, the program and the control. Those are the ones you need to use. Everything else, just don't touch it until you feel better because it's going to stop you from getting started you doing the work. Okay? Um, and we will talk about this in this webinar later. So then you, um, all you need to do is you go to the downloads page on the Spooky, Spooky Mall um, website. Uh, you download the software into your generator and you may have to disconnect your... Um, your Norton or your, your uh, 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 what's this called, um, program, uh, uh, Norton. <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, um, Penny, help me. The program that makes sure that you're not uploading crap. Uh, <laughs> um, this is, anyway, you, you have to, if you have Norton, just discontinue, disconnect it for a minute because it does not recognize Spooky. Okay. And it will tell you it's a strange software. You shouldn't upload it. Just disconnect it, upload it anyways, and you're good to go. Um, 
and then all you need to do is you load this um, you you upload this software onto your computer you connect your generator to the computer and then you connect means of transportation in this case that means your remote your um, your contact your uh, uh, plasma your um, plasma if you want to use that your PMF code, we talk about this in a little bit. You connect that to your generator and then you're just, you, you're good to go. Okay. There are two kinds of generators, right? The, the blue one is very inexpensive. This, this one by itself is a hundred bucks. Um, it's a wonderful working horse. It's, it's, a, it's a great generator that does most things, including biofeedback, but it's doing a specific biofeedback which takes a long time to do and it requires you to be absolutely still um, which is one of the many reasons why a lot of people use the second generator which is the gen x that has actually this is two in one um, it's much faster it has a much larger bandwidth the biofeedback only takes six minutes with this and um, what you can do with the gen x that you can't do with the blue one, with the um, XM, is you can actually take the Gen X offline, which means you can program programs into the Gen X and take it off the computer and run them separately. So this is hopefully really helpful for some of you guys to see that there are a few differences there. Um, the Gen X has other quality differences um, that makes it very much worthwhile to consider a Gen X. Um, but it is a more expensive generator as well. So if you start off, just know they're different. And if you're interested in biofeedback, there is a significant difference between the Gen X and the XM. Okay. Um, you can see here, uh, it, this is a text slide. So for those of you who are leaning forward and trying to see more right now, just go ahead and do that. Um, so there are two outputs. You can see the outputs here on, this, um, on the top. I don't know why that doesn't show here, but it doesn't. Um, and four outputs for the Gen X. A frequency range um, of the XM is um, five, up to five um, megahertz. And uh, the DC is 40. So that's a huge difference right there. And uh, you can see the biofeedback is very different. Do we have any questions? Oh yeah, okay, so really quickly before we do this, how many generators are needed? That's a question a lot of beginners ask. And the answer is um, as many as you want. You need one for to execute one function, okay? So what this means is that if you want to use your generator for a killing program, which means you've, you have some kind of a pathogen or critter in your body that you wanna kill off, then you need one, the generator for that. You cannot use the same generator simultaneously for killing and healing. You cannot do detox and killing at the same time. But a lot of people who are killing stuff off, they're running detox programs and pain programs and healing programs as well. And that's why they have several generators. Or they want to just keep some programs running while they do biofeedback, uh, for example, without wanting to have to unplug everything and move it around. So that's one of the main reasons why people have more generators, simply because they want to do more stuff. Okay, I hope this makes sense. All right, and when the question comes to where do you begin? Well, you really wanna start with your goals and your budget in mind, okay? You don't buy a car to see what it does. You buy a car because you want to do something or because you wanna get somewhere right? You buy a minivan once you have your second child, I would think. If you live in the U.S., that's usually when that happens. Some people start with the first. As soon as you have your third, it's a minivan, <laughs> okay? So you don't go out and say, what kind of sports cars are out there? Because it doesn't really matter. You have three kids, right? So you need to understand what you want, what you, what you want to do. And you will see that the, um, the devices are different in strength and different in how you can use them. So if you, for example, want to use it to see, you know, to treat cancer, you need a stronger machine than you need if you want to use essential oils. Why? Because you're treating cancer. It's just how that is, right? Or if you want to work with Lyme and you're filled with 
critters. You need a stronger machine. So that's what you have to have in mind. Um, does that mean that if you can't afford it, you shouldn't even start? Um, that does not mean it. It just means that the results are better, the better the machine is that you're using. Um, if you can only afford one, one blue XM generator and you want to start playing with it, um, you're not going to hurt yourself. Um, it's, I don't know if it's going to be a longer process. I don't know how this is going to unfold, but it will benefit you in any way that you can use it effectively. They just recommend stronger or more generators depending on, you know, yeah, what you're dealing with, you know, just think about this, um, how that makes sense. The different systems do different things. Um, and, uh, it also, there's a pitfall that some people fall into. Remember, this is not a sales uh, 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 webinar. So I can say this very happily. Um, start where you're comfortable at, okay? Don't get the all there is and then sit there and start thinking, what, where do I even begin? Really try to master this one step at a time. Get comfortable with it. Play with it see that it works. A lot of people, they just want confirmation in the beginning. A lot of people actually get confirmation as soon as they start detoxing metal <laughs> on remote. They know that this works. <laughs> um, start there if that's where you're at. Don't overwhelm yourself and just keep it simple. Um, set a goal, connect your, you know, whatever it is you want to connect to use this and then just try it and go from there. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So here are your means of transmission for the lack of a better word. We have contact, we have remote, plasma, laser, PMF, scalar. And yes, there's also audio and you can, you can use a foot, foot bath if you want. Um, so uh, let's see if we, let me actually stop the screen sharing for a minute. If I can, this is so funny because the, no, I can't actually. Okay. Um, Penny, can you see if people have a question there? Yeah. Or if there's anything coming up, is there anything you would like to add? Because the last thing we want to do now is fire hose people. Okay. And Sandy, I see you're raising your hand. We're answering questions at the end, honey. Okay. So um, I hope that works for you. Let me just see what I can see here. There we go. Okay, somebody, can we do audio with Gen X? I, I don't see why not, right? Because for, Gen, for the audio, let me just actually just show this to you because I pulled out my little things here. This is the goodie bag. So some of you have not seen this. Um, this, is, this is a little audio speaker and you, it just comes with a, attachment piece and you plug that into your generator in and then you can choose frequencies that you would like to hear and you can hear them okay this is i for those of us who are auditory this is actually a wonderful way to um to benefit from this you know there are also youtubes where people uploaded those but you can do your own programs you can heal your own healing programs um we have the laser right this this is a wider laser and then we have this one here i love this one um i live in new england so environmental stuff is a problem and i can just stick these in my nose and i can clean up my sinuses there are there are many different things you can use um for spooky hold on i'm just looking through this we need to have you show us how to actually do what please okay No, it doesn't because I want to get a link to it. Okay. Um, all right. So, so I guess so far, oh, and I also wanted to show you guys, I have slides for this as well, but I wanted to show you guys just really quickly in life. Um, there are two different kinds of contacts that you can have that make sense. There are these guys and there are also these guys. I use these ones. These were the original ones. I use this for baths because you can actually put them into a, uh, into a foot bath and you can use it for detox, which is really, really cool. Some people really like these, these are lighter and you just pluck those into your cable. Um, and then obviously we also have, I, I love these things. 
you know, because this basically replaces tense pads, which means you don't have to stick them on your, on your skin and you can take them on and off really easily. So for example, if I arrive and I'm at my computer, I just wear these things or I wear, I wear a sock on my left foot and I wear this on my right hand and then I can just wipe while I'm working and it doesn't distract me in any way. So I love that stuff. Okay. I hope that's, that's helpful for those of you who've never seen this before. All right. So, um, where are we at? So, so the next, the first step you need to do is, hold on, let me actually share this again. Share the screen. There we go. Here we go. Okay. So first you want to see, uh, you want to choose the frequencies. That is the first thing you need to do. Remember, you need to decide what you want to use Spooky for. Okay. Um, and there are different ways of doing that as you begin. So you can just go by your symptoms. You can say, I have a headache and you choose programs for headaches. You can go by biofeedback. You can go by a diagnosis that you've been given by a doctor and see uh, in the program step if there are um, uh, programs for this. Um, you can work by your desired outcome when you work with healing programs. You know, if you want to be, if you want to release anxiety, for example, okay, or if you if you feel, um, you know, if you want to enhance focus. Um, there are a lot of programs like that. So you kind of decide in the beginning what it is that you want to do. Um, and then, uh, oh yeah, and this is really important. Remember that this is experimental. It's not a medical prescription. What works for you might not work for others. Okay. And there are many different reasons for that. That's actually, by the way, true for pretty much anything um, as far as healing is, is concerned. Um, not just for rifing, but, you know, sometimes you take a pill and it just doesn't work. Okay, you have to take your own responsibility here and see how your body reacts. Um, and uh, you might, ha might have to adjust a few things if necessary. So you decide on the frequencies. That is your very first step. And in the program step, you do this under the program step. And then you decide on a shell preset. The shell preset means... Um, so you have these frequencies that your body, that you decided your body needs or you want to use right now, but they are, you now have to find a way to get them from the generator carried into your body. And that's where there's, there's shell presets come in. Those, they basically carry the, uh, frequencies that you decided on from the generator into your body. Okay, and they have different ways, and I'm explaining this as a lay person right now, and I hope I'm not making the, the worst mistake here, but I, this is how I understand it. Um, some of those shell presets are, uh, they are designed, for example, only for killing. Okay, so they have an ability to shoot the frequencies you decided on in a way that is much more aggressive than a preset that is designed for healing. Okay, um, compared with a jagged edge versus a wave, like a gentle wave. So if you put a, if you want to kill something off, you want to have a shell preset that has a jagged edge, that is sharp, that shoots those frequencies into your body and actually makes that effect stronger. Penny, you, did I explain this correctly? Yeah, correct. cor correctly enough. See, I, I'm very proud of myself right now. Okay, so if you guys decide to start by using, by choosing frequencies yourself, then the way to do that is you go to the programs tab and you decide what you want to use. You click on these programs and then you go to the tab on the left, which is your presets. Okay, and in the presets, you go all the way down to the bottom where it says, um, empty shell or shell empty presets. You click on that and then you are a beginner. So there's, you only want to do one of two things. You either want to kill or you want to heal. Killing means stuff is in your body that needs to go. Healing is the, all the rest. 
It's as simple as that, okay? If something needs to be, needs to be killed, like a virus, a bacteria, a fungus, a mold, uh, a pathogen, killing. If that's not what you need to do, healing, okay? If you're not 100% sure, um, it's not, um, Penny, my understanding is that if, if you use a healing preset, you are not going to completely destroy the killing effect. Is that correct? It's just better to use a, a killing program, a, a killing preset, which means that if you, if you do mess it up, it's not like nothing happens. It's just the right way to do it is use killing for killing and healing for healing. That is correct, right? Yeah. Okay. And what you want to use is you want to use the JW. That's a recommendation that I have received. That's the one that John White um, created and they work and that's why you want to use them. <laughs> there are others and they work in different ways and they're worth exploring once you feel better about using Spooky. But in the beginning, just either use Killing John White, JW, or use Healing John White and you're probably good to go. I hope that's helpful. Okay. So, um, the next step is you want to create a program now, okay? So, you go to the presets tab, you, you scroll down to the empty shell, you choose in that empty shell, it gives you a choice and it asks you what do you want to use. Do you want to use remote, contact, plasma, scalar? And we will talk about this a little bit more in a minute, okay? And then... And that's actually what this looks like on your, in your software. So it's the very left tab. And you see that in the red box, it says shell, empty, presets, contact. So you chose a contact. Then you, see, you look down and you see um, under contact, you see the JWs. And you see killing CJW, which means killing with contact created by, jo by John White. Okay, and you also see uh, right above that healing CJW, which means healing contact created by John White. If you chose instead of contact remote, you would see the same thing, but would have an R behind it, alpha remote. Okay, so that's as easy as this is. Don't let the rest of it make you get you confused. Uh, it's all great, it's working. As you do your research, you know when you want to use it. In the beginning, don't use it, just use one of those two, and you're probably good to go for quite a while. I hope that's, that's once I realized that my life became a whole lot easier with, with, uh, with writing. Okay. Um, and I said, go to the preset step, which is of course not true. Go to the program step, which is right next to it. Search for what you want to do. Oh, this is important. So this is a spelling mistake that I said there. Um, when you uh, when you look for the right programs to use, you need sometimes need to be a little bit creative. Okay, you want to be very mindful of your spelling. There is no autocorrect in this program. Okay, so if you misspell something, or if you are too narrow in your search, which means if you are looking for headaches instead of headache, you will not get results. Right, because. Um, it doesn't, it, the, because the search term might be just headache or you, uh, a better way might even be to say head A, but skip the K it, just in case there are other ways of using the words, be a little bit creative. And, um, and, uh, this spelling is American spelling usually. So if you're from England, it might be that you have to use a few words in American spelling in order to find the right answers. Um, yeah, and then you just click on the programs that, that you want to use. And, uh, and that basically chains them together. Um, and your next step then, once you have these programs, you, you, do, you go further to the right on your tabs. You skip over the settings tab. You don't worry about that. That's for later. You go on the control tab. And the control tab is where your um, generators show up. Okay. Um, when you, uh, you need to make sure that the generators that you want to use are red, which means they're off because if the generator is still running and, uh, you try to load a new program on it, it's not going to work. 
Okay, so the generator has to be turned off. And then you can click on the little um, square that says override the generator, which means override the program that is on the generator right now with the new program and you click start. And that's all there is. There's one mistake that you can make and that is that when you click on, that, on the, the generator as it's running and you turn it off, then you will have to go back and restart and, and create the programs again. Okay, because when you when the uh, the generator is running and you go to the program step, the program step will show you which programs are running, not the ones that you want to run in the future, but the ones you're running right now. So before you start the whole process of overriding a generator, make sure your generate the generators you want to use are turned off. Then you create your program, you put it in a shell, and you override the generator, and you're ready to go. Is this? Is this clear to you for you guys how this all how this all works? Let me just stop my screen sharing for a minute. And hold on, this does not work like that. This mouse is not working here. This is weird. Oh, there we go. Now I know why. Okay. Okay, I get some all clears. I get some yes, clear, thank you. Um, somebody said no, I don't know to what. Okay, somebody already asked questions about DNA. We didn't get there yet. Okay, we will in a minute. So, and I really want to point something out to you guys. The question, we're, we're going to do this in sequence. And when you follow this in sequence, it's gonna be so much easier for you. Wrong spell all the time, guilty. <laughs> Lena. Yeah, Lena, that's a, that's a sucker for everybody. And there's no autocorrect, you know? Sometimes we just have to accept the fact that this is not a, you know, this is a Mercedes. This is a big deal, this machine. And it does certain things in a certain way, which you have to learn how to do it. Okay, cool. Um, okay, perfect. So let me just switch over again, and then we'll talk about this some more. Let's share my screen. Okay. Let's use that. Okay. And I'm going to play this. There you go. Okay, the net, one thing, um, sometimes you'll get confused about what is a preset, what is a program, where's the difference? Remember, the programs are really just the frequencies you need, and they need to be put into a shell in order to use them. But a lot of the programs are already done for you. The whole cancer program, the Lyme programs, the Morgulon programs, the extra programs, there are a gazillion programs where actually extremely genius people sat down and said, what is the best way to get results with this? And those are not in the programs tab, but they are actually already combined in the right shell with the right carrier, everything you need to do ready to go for you. So all you need to do is go to the preset and decide this is what I want to use and load that in your generator. This is a really big deal. And um, as you can, um, let me just look here at my, my computer so there so anything that you find in presets is ready to use and a lot of beginners actually might want to play with that the whole biofeedback um uh, presets you just click on them and run them um your um detox you click on it and run it there are a lot of things that you can do straight from there so um that's the difference between the presets and the programs. The programs are the, the frequencies are frequency packages on their own. The presets are full programs that you can run out of the box. Okay. Also, um, to empower you, there are PDF guides, not only on the website, but they're also right in the software. They're usually linked under the list of the programs that you're using. Click on them, download them, read them as you need them. Don't read them all before you start arriving because you're going to um, feel very fire host. But just read them and you will learn step by step what you need to do. Really step by step. Okay. Um, there are also explanations, obviously, um, to the right of the frequencies that you're looking that explain more about all this. 
So here we're talking now about detoxing. The reason um, the detox program in Spooky 2 is called Terrain, and that's because it systematically cleans out the entire terrain of your body systems and organs in the right order. Okay. Um, it is always recommended to start with the terrain program, which takes 10 to 11 days. It's the normal ter uh, terrain pr program takes 11 days. And here's the reason why. Um, rifing kills stuff off. Remember that which means it can totally overload your system with toxins. And when you're already toxic, chances are you feel a lot worse before you feel a lot better, right? You want to make sure that your body's actually ready to process what you're doing and to heal with the work that you're doing. And so get rid of the old toxins first, make sure that your systems are running well and running correctly. And, um, and you will also, a lot of people actually use this on remote and uh, they very often, I said this before, find that as soon as it gets to, um, uh, 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 as soon as it gets to, to uh, getting rid of heavy metals, they just say, ooh, I had no idea. <laughs> I could feel this way, you know, because when, some people really, when they, when they start releasing heavy metals, it's, it becomes a big deal. Okay, so you actually feel that you're detoxing. And then you know that the remote works. Okay. Um, also, the other reason why terrain is a really good place to start for beginners is because it will allow you to, the time you need to study. You're already doing it. You took that first step. You're doing it. Uh, you let the computer run and you can then um, get going from there. Okay. Um, there are three different kinds of detox. The general terrain is for healthy people that don't have mercury fillings, okay? Um, and uh, remember, if you detox too quickly, you may have to stop your detox sometimes and just run a Herxheimer program that's in the Lion package or a run, run a healing program and just, or just give yourself some time. Drink plenty, plenty of water. Um, if you feel like you're really not feeling well, just stop nobody's going to get hurt if you do that. Okay. Just take it slow. Um, the terrain minus mercury is for people who have mercury fillings and, uh, and don't want to experience a heavy duty mercury detox. And you know, the other thing that can happen is that the terrain program will actually go after the mercury in your fillings. That's the last thing you need, right? You really don't need all that mercury loosening up, flooding through your bloodstream. Okay, so yes, while you might feel bad that you have mercury in your teeth and you would like to get them out of your bloodstream that's already in it, uh, the terrain program is not the way to do that. You actually have to get them out of your teeth first and then you do a gentle mercury cleanse. Gently, gently, there's a big deal. Uh, there's a nonviolent terrain program and that actually skips the killing. It just helps you, your body to focus on healing and rejuvenation. And that only takes um, 10 days instead of 11 days. There's a PDF attached to this. Um, but, uh, you know, some people, they are just too sick to really get into more, uh, uh, into more killing off of stuff. It's just, it's, that's just not where they're at yet. And if that's you, start with the nonviolent, see if you feel better. Get your body ready. Keep getting your body ready and just add more. Maybe the next time you're going to be able to do a general terrain or a terrain minus mercury. Okay. So I hope this is helpful. Um, so it's very easy to do. It's a done for you program. You go to the presets tab. You click on detox. You choose how you want to detox. You choose if you want to use contact, remote or plasma. Um, a lot of people, if you have more than one generator, they do, let's say contact, um, which is stronger, uh, with one generator. And then they use the second generator for remote or some people, uh, let everything run on remote. If you do that, it's usually recommended that you set your remotes. If you have one, uh, more than one remote that you set them about five minutes apart so that you're not constantly running the same frequency twice, but you're actually running the f f uh, first frequency for three minutes and then it switches to the next and the second generator jumps in and does it again. Okay. So you just kind of set your, your generators apart just a little bit in time, start them a little bit later so that you get a deeper detox that way. Um, 
you do your contact, you can use remote, you can use Plasma. Um, and then you just click from the um, presets tab over to the control tab, uh, to, the, uh, um, to the control tab, uh, you click over, override the generator and you start the program. It's very straightforward, okay? Um, and yeah, if you choose, remember the Gen X, I said this in the beginning, that for the Gen X, you can actually program this into. But if you choose to do that, you need to know that um, you need to program each step separately. Um, if you have your generator connected to the computer, the computer will just run one after the other. I'm going to show you what they look like in just a minute. Okay. But um, if you don't want to use the computer, you have to uh, read, um, program them separately. So here's your detox. Um, in this example, uh, first you go to the presets, you go to the detox tab, you choose remote, for example, you click on that. Uh, the, the tab shows up. You can see up here, um, it says detox remote right on the presets, and then you choose either detox maintenance, which is what you do after you're done with the terrain. You want to keep uh, cleaning your system out continuously as you arrive, but you don't need to do it as intensely all the time. So you just click on the maintenance then. But when you begin with this, you hear, find here your terrain, your terrain minus mercury, or your terrain nonviolent. And you just decide which one you think is right for you. and uh, and go from there, okay? So uh, here's a list of the, the things that terrain actually cleans out. And I think when you look at that, you understand why it's important to do. It removes metals for two days. It removes chemical materials. It removes system toxins for two days, intestinal toxins and more systematic toxins. It remo uh, removes parasites and anything that can stop your liver from functioning. It helps your kidneys to function, flush those out. You know, those, those are your big um, cleansing systems. They need to be ready. It cleanses your blood. Um, it releases more. Then it goes back to cleaning out uh, kidney and liver toxins, intestinal parasites, and it also cleans your lymphatic system, um, lymphatic system. So that's what you get by running terrain. Okay. All right, so let's talk about how to actually, let me just stop the screen share for a minute and go back. Can you guys actually see me? I'm curious. Can you see me when I'm scaring machine, uh, scaring machine, <laughs> sharing my screen? <laughs> or or can, you, can you not see me? Yeah, we can see you. You can see me. Okay, good. So that okay. I don't poke my nose as I do this. All right, perfect. <laughs> That's what I, what I was what I was thinking. Okay, and control. So we have to run presets at the beginning. Okay. All right. So let us, let me just show you um, the different devices that we have. So one of the things that you use when you, now, now what we're uh, talking about actually, oh, shit unplug this here. Now what we're talking about actually is how to connect the whole thing. Okay, so this is a boost and this is a remote. So let's talk about the boost first and I can share my screen in a minute. A lot of people get confused because they don't know out one and out two and you know the high and the, the colloidal silver port and whatnot. Um, I would like, and I show you a slide in a minute that you can see it even better, but I would like to encourage you to realize that it's actually labeled. Okay, it says right on the boost um, which output is which output. So when it says put it in out one, what you do is you look at your boost and say, oh, that's the one. Okay, it's really very, very simple. You also see that they look differently because they do different things. Your remote always goes here at the bottom left. These are the two different ones for control. Okay, this one here is a strong one. This one here is a weak one. This is the, I'm just going to say it this way. I know it's more complicated than that, but remember that the colloidal silver one is one that is not as strong as this one. Um, I personally, I use this all the time. And the reason I do that is because I feel like I'm getting zapped when I take the strong one. I'm very sensitive to energies and the, the, um, the uh, 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 high power 
contact is just for me personally usually too strong and it also depends on the frequencies that you're running because some frequencies they can really bite you a little bit so if you feel on contact it's too strong you switch over to this guy over here okay that's basically all you need to know the purpose of the boost is to take the two outlets from your generator actually let me see if i can pull this over i'm just going to go and grab my gen x really quick and with that my software said you shouldn't have done that okay so that's a gen x okay so what the boost actually does is it combines the power of the two so it becomes even stronger okay you could yes you could also connect it to to um just to the out here but it's not as strong as it is when you use the boost penny did i say this correctly correct okay good so that's why this why you can use a relatively inexpensive generator and use a boost and get some phenomenal results with it because you just plug this on and all of a sudden you have a much more powerful machine that you had before okay so that's how you do it the way you connect the boost is you take your generator you see this you stick it on just like that and then you just twist it and it clicks you hear the click and then it's fixed and you're done that's all very very easy to do so there's there's no magic there and then when you want to take it off you do it the same way you just scroll these backwards take them off done okay there are some times when you don't use the boost and the instructions for those uh, situate for those um applications will tell you that for example if you want to do a biofeedback um john feels that it's better not to use a boost because you want to go straight into the machine without any signal distortion comes later but good to know okay usually that's what you do so here's your boost and you plug this right in when you order a kit the boost comes with it the whole thing comes with it you, you just do that if you want to use the remote this is your remote outlet you plug it right in here oops make sure i do this right you plug it right here until it snaps in and then you turn this again yeah this is the moment you need my hands twist this just twist it like that and it's nice and, and and strong in it okay that's all you need to do and then this is where your dna sample goes in and we talk about that in just a second and and then you're done okay this is as easy as this is to use if you want to use contact let me show that to you as well um let me use this contact table here then you have your contact cable oh, wrong, wrong side this one you have your contact cable right here you don't want to use contact and remote on the same on the same generator because they're actually not making each other stronger they're interfering with each other right so let me just take this off there we go and then remember you you just choose if you want to use the the lower the the colloidal silver one or if you want to use the high power one that's a choice um and you just click this on here it goes right on and you twist it and you're done and you're ready to use contact and then on these little ends you just put your your contact pads you just pop them on or you attach it to the cuffs that i showed you before and you can use contact it's as simple as it's really this is not complicated a lot of people say you know how do you connect this well you do that and you're done right and then there is there's a um a power outlet here okay which is very uh, which we know and this is a usb outlet and the whole unit comes with a usb plug and with a power plug you can't into you, you can't switch this around this one uh, this is the power plug you put the power in this is the usb plug you put the usb in it's as simple as that okay and that never changes whether you put this um to the central or whether you connect this with your uh, with your computer okay i hope this is this takes the the mystery out of how do you connect the hardware because it's it literally this is this is all you need to know um the same thing is true obviously if you want to use pmf cables and whatnot but that's that's what it is okay um is this is this helpful is did this take the mystery out of it a little bit um how to do that perfect excellent um somebody actually just asked if when you use the gen x can you use one uh, one of the generators for killing and the other for healing yeah they're separate generators absolutely 
you know they're not they're not interfering with each other they're built to be two generators in one so you can but you cannot do it on the same boost you can only do it um within those you can you use them separately that's the whole point of having it this way okay cool um I did not know not to use remote with contact cable. Yeah, remote does not go with a con. You can actually, well, there are extension cables. If you really need more space, there are actually these little, let me see if I have one here. Yeah, see, this is one. You know, you can order these, they, they you know, and again, you got a lot of the people, right? This is, a, this is a piece that you can connect if you need a different, if you if you need to plug this into a, a different outlet on the boost uh, i want to say they charge 50 cents for this i think that's what it is <laughs> you know nobody's trying to make money on you here they're really just trying to help you get your stuff connected and there are cables like this that you can use and you if you need more length you can just connect them together like that use a little hook and then you have a cable that's twice as long. And yes, you can also put your remote over here if you have to. Some people do because they put their, um, let's say you, you take your generator and you put it in a drawer and you want to use the remote on top. So you just kind of fiddle it through. Um, I use this these things quite a bit when I do biofeedback, for example, or when I do other things where I need to be personally hooked onto stuff and it's too far away. So those are all, um, you know, those are just, things that are available to you that you can, that you can use. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So let's see. Um, let me share my screen really quick again. And I think we have already covered quite a bit of, of the presentation. Um, but I think you can probably see this better here, which is why it probably makes more sense to show it to you this way. Okay, so here you see on your boost, hold on, let me, let me move this over because this is annoying for you guys. All right, cool. Much better. Okay, cool. So, where are we going? We're going here. Perfect. All right, here you see on your boost the descriptions, right? So it says high power, colloidal silver, MN, magnetic north, and then um, uh, 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 the south on the left. Okay, so you can see this is all labeled. If you are in doubt, look at your boost and you'll find exactly what you need to do. Okay. So when you are in contact mode, you want to make sure you, you, uh, all you do is you choose the right program and then you either attach the tense pads, you hold the cylinders, you use the bands that I showed you before, the socks or the gloves or the bands. Um, there's also an internal electrode. Um, some people who have, for example, rectal cancer or other issues going on in the lower cavity of the body, they use this. Um, it's actually, when you think about it, it's kind of a cool... Uh, thing to know that yes you can insert this in where it needs to be inserted and get uh, the rifling frequencies directly to where they need to be um, we talked about this if you want to run a safe low contact session contact the colloidal silver output and you boost it's the second from the right and for greater power connect the high power port all right um, these are our accessories. I showed these to you already. Some of this is a repeat really quick. Um, this is, uh, Penny, who is this? She's beautiful like you. Is it the- <laughs> She is uh, our um, foster colleague. Um, is a, she is a, my colleague. Oh, okay. Okay. You guys are just, you guys are just beautiful. But you can see how she's using this, right? So you can yeah. see, for example, that you, if you want to be comfortable and you want to watch TV and you want to arrive as you do it, um, you just put the sock socks on or the handcuffs. You can still use your hands. It's not in the way. Um, these little cables, they, um, they move better. I think I find they move better than the tens pads because they're not sticky. You don't have to worry so much about it. And you can just let this... Um, very comfortably um, run those frequencies through you using these devices. 
Um, here's some Q&A that people had. I'm just gonna go through this really quick. Um, so some people asked in contact mode if using the pads on the feet is as effective as on the hands and the answer is yes, All right? Um, but the understanding is that in, in an ideal world, you want to have the frequencies running through your body, which means you have um, one contact on your left foot and one on your right hand. And then it kind of runs through your body, but it's gentle on your heart, which you always need to be very careful with. Um, you can, how many times a day can you use Spooky with contact mode? Um, probably two session stops, better to take things slowly. You will feel this. Remember, nobody can prescribe to you and tell you exactly what to do. Um, you need to see how you react and what works for you. Um, you will see, for example, when you look into the cancer programs that, um, that uh, they tell you how often to run contact or how long to run remote. Um, and that's really what you should be doing because that's been kind of tested and it makes sense this way. Um, ultimately, the choice is up to you. But, um, you know, two sessions is a recommendation. Take it slowly. Um, and there's another reason, and that's when you do seven daily contact treatments um, is, is probably better for you than back-to-back -back seven contact treatments. If you just give it some space, because your body needs to adjust, right? It's not like we kill things off and kill things off. It's not like you, you learn how to run a marathon by never stopping to run. You run and then you stop and you rejuvenate and then you run again and then you stop and you, it just gets better and better. This is kind of like that, okay? Um, the tense pads, uh, well, the understanding is about 20 times, um, but it depends. If you have really hairy arms, it's probably less than that. <laughs> and if you choose to put lotion on your arms, uh, on your hands before you use the tense pads, you will ruin them very quickly. Okay, so um, that's just good to know. Um, as soon as they stop sticking, you need to replace them. So this is actually something I found very interesting. People ask, you know, where should I place the tense pads? The answer is really, where should you not place them? And that is, uh, don't place them above your shoulders or on your heart. You don't want to in, want the uh, right thing to interfere with your heart. It can impact your heart rhythm. You never know. Just leave the heart alone. Okay. Um, don't run it through your heart either, to the left and right of your heart. If you have one tense pad there and the one on the other side, it will still run through your heart. Just don't do that. Don't put it above your shoulders. So even if you want to treat your neck, the shoulders is where it ends. Don't put it on your neck. Don't put it in your face. You can get burns. You can get other um, effects. Um, that is that is a an absolute no-no. Shoulders is where it ends hairy areas and don't put it on open wounds and you know scar tissue and whatever that's a no that's logical don't put them right over a joint so don't put them over your elbows knees and ankles um don't use them when they're wet they must be set aside to dry and don't use damaged ones right other than that you can just see it goes um so this is an interesting question. Is it possible to use two generators for contact mode at the same time? Can I use one treatment setting um, for detox healing at this, um, one on a treatment setting and the other one on a detox healing setting at the same time, but both on the tense pads? And the answer is no, don't do that. Um, so when you use contact, only use one set of tense pads or one set of contact contacts um, because that electricity will actually start flowing between the generators is my understanding. Penny, you do I see do I say this correctly? Correct. Okay. So it will basically not not do much to you, but the generators will start talking to each other and that's not the point. Right? So you really want those frequencies to to run through you. Um, what is recommended instead is that you run a detox generator in remote while you're using the other one in contact. So 
And that works very well. Remote is actually very, very powerful. Also, because even though it might not be as strong as contact, you can run it 24 seven and with contact, you just can't, right? So it adds up and it keeps adding up. And that's, uh, it, I, I have most of my, I have 13 generators standing around here. It's, um, I have, you know, some connect to plasma and whatnot, but I have a whole bunch of them on remote all the time. And, uh, and it's, it's fascinating how, how powerful this is. I immediately feel when I turn them off. So, um, yeah. You could use odd one. Yeah. So for what you want to do, run the detox generator in remote while you're using the other under con with contact. If you want to use four ten splits, you could if you used out one and out two from the same generator. Remember, you don't want to have two generators talking to each other. If you wanted to use it from the ge same generator, you would use out one and out two. But the problem is that you would completely lower the signal, right? You you um. So it's it's just bottom line, just don't do it. So remote, I already showed you this. I already uh, dropped the remote. So you see, <laughs> um, it's very easy to connect. And um, this, is, this is something I think you guys might want to understand. Quantum mechanics for dummies. Um, <laughs> so quantum mechanics, it is, what, what this actually is, is, it describes how the universe works at a smaller level than atoms. All right, an atom is not the smallest thing there is. There's a much smaller world right under that. A quantum of energy is a specific amount of energy. Um, and quantum mechanics describes how that energy moves and interacts at the subatomic level. So this is the invisible world of frequencies and energy. Um, Spooky 2, you guys may know this, is called actually after Albert Einstein. <laughs> yes, he called it spooky action at a distance. It was, he didn't really like that this was happening because it contradicted his own findings a little bit, but it happened anyways. So here's what um, remote is built on and what this entire system is built on. Quantum entanglement means that if any part of a single system or uh, so of something there is on a subatomic level is removed from that system, so you cut it off and you bring it to a different location. Then any action performed on one part would also be instantaneously be performed on the parent system and vice versa. Um, so what this means is that when you have a piece of DNA and take it from the rest of your DNA, when you cut a piece of DNA off and remove it from the DNA, whatever you do, to a part of that DNA happens to the rest of it as well. Your DNA is like an antenna. It's a double helix and it kind of draws these energies in. I'm just going to explain this in lay terms. So the question is, how do you get frequencies into your body? Your DNA is the spinning thing, right? And it draws the energy into your system. Okay, and on a quantum level, your DNA is only one system. It's not two. The second you clip off a fingernail, you have two different DNAs. It's still one DNA. It's you. Your DNA is you. So once it starts drawing in those frequencies, it draws into wherever your DNA is and starts exposing you and changing you in that fashion. Okay, um, so... This is why um, when we take a piece of DNA, like a fingernail clipping, um, and put it into a remote, we can actually use that uh, fingernail clipping as long as the, the DNA is still alive to treat the whole of you. Once I realized what that means, it, I was just shocked because... Uh, first of all, it explains a whole lot of other things as well. When you think how many times you think, why does something even impact me? Why do I even bother? You realize that you as a person are so much more. You are this, you're really one system that is reacting and, and doing things. And you feel when things come into your field. You think, you feel when they change you. Um, and being able now with rifing and with, especially with the, um, the, the remote part of rifing to, um, to impact how your DNA functions, 
what's happening to you on that deep level? It's, it's just, it, it, that's absolutely incredible. Right. And that goes so far beyond the regular rifing where you just use your contact pads and you put them on, you put the frequencies in. Once you start using remote, it's a whole different world. I would like to give you guys an example. Um, my daughter studies in Germany and um, I had her before she left. I, I, I took of uh, DNA samples of fingernail clippings from her so I can treat her remotely if necessary. And she sent me. Um, a, a text message with a picture that I spare you guys from because it was really awful um, with dark brown mucus like this flag this, it looked horrible and of course I went on Google and it said it's somewhere between chronic bronchitis and um, and whatever the other lung disease was I forgot probably pneumonia um, and she'd been coughing this stuff up all night and all day until she finally said mom what is this and panicked me, ran to my spooky. I took two fingernail clippings, or probably four. No, I think I took two. I used two of my generators, put, put them into the remote, and I had one running on pneumonia and the other one on bronchitis and anything else I could find in that category. I used two because I wanted to treat many things at the same time. I didn't want, you know, 10 hours of program to run. I just wanted to hit this thing hard. And she texted me back, and she said she coughed up one more time, and that was the end of it after coughing all night and it really didn't look good. So that's how powerful this is, right? And I've been remotely treating her all the time. And, and I, you know, I do this for myself as well when I'm, when I'm traveling and it's, it's a powerful, powerful thing to have. So I highly would encourage you to get into that a little bit. So um, there are a few, a few different kinds of DNA. Um, that people have questions about. The best one is, hands down, is your finger or toenails. Um, doesn't matter. And that's just because this is, they are encased in the carotene. So they are, they're stable. They don't, they don't dry out. Um, and they last for probably about a month. Um, some people use them much, much longer than that, and they still work. Um, there is, I don't think there is a set in stone recommendation, but the recommendation is probably to replace them every month. If you feel that you're not getting results, the first thing to do is to replace your DNA, to replace the sample. Or if you cut your nails anyways, just, just put them in a, in a baggie and, and change out your remotes, you know, easy to do. Um, you can use saliva, um, but that's only good for about three days. And uh, you want to make sure that you let that air dry on a strip of blotting paper um, before you put it into the remote. Um, you can use the, what the police does. They do the, the um, cheek swipe. Um, again, allow that to air dry. Um, that's good for four to five days. That's a different kind of material that they take from the inside of your cheek. You can use hair. Um, but uh, the hair shaft itself contains no DNA, only RNA. So you must have the root bulb attached. So you really have to pluck it out and then you have that little bulb. And that's only good for two days. So um, think about it. If you want to, you know, pull out your hair every two days or if you want to cut your fingernails once a month, choice is yours. Um, but also, you know, play with it. If you feel that something works better for you than something else, then by all means, you know, when you say I always use hair and I like it better, then that's what you choose to do. That's, that's totally up to you. Okay. All right. Yes, you can use blood. Some people do. Um, the the uh, diabetes, little lancets, they work really well for that. Um, again, allow it to air dry. It's probably good for f five to six days. Um, it, it might be a good idea if you really want to check things that are might be in your blood. You can use blood for that. You know, sometimes body liquids or body fluids are, are um, something that you want to check. But again, if you want to poke your fingers, go for it. And if you want to just use your fingernail clippings, do that. All right. Okay. Uh, how to use the remote? It is literally as easy as, oh, this is the wrong one. It is literally as easy as opening it up putting your sample in and closing it. That's it, okay? There are two different kinds of um, ways to put the, the nail clipping. I think I have one here. So you have a nail clipping here. And when you get your machine, 
It comes with these little circles. So you pull up a circle, you stick the nail on it, and then you take another circle, you put it on the other side. This way it's nice and sealed off. And then you write the name on it and the date. And then the whole thing just goes here into the remote. The new remotes, you can, you can just stick it in. With the old remotes, I still have some of those. Um, it kind of had to be in the middle of the remote. Um, but that's that's just about it. You can definitely put more um, samples into your remote, no problem, but you want to make sure that you separate them, okay? Because they can get uh, entangled and you don't want that. So you want to make, for example, if you want to detox your, your entire family on terrain, just do a little circle like this or a half circle, I sometimes do it this way, and put them in and just separate them and uh, and you're done. Okay, you can also obviously use just paper tape if, you, if you're more comfortable doing that. Um, but that's as easy as it is. You know, there's, there's no rocket science to that. Um, and then you just start your program. So remember, you pick a shell, you decide if you want to use a killing or healing program, and then you decide which programs you want to use. You, you click on all of those programs, then they're ready to go. You go to the control tab, you click on override generator and get started, and you're done. That's it for beginners. It's really that simple. Okay? So remember this is when we when we practice this is what it looks like. Um, presets tab choose the uh, shell uh, healing or killing or healing. Decide what you want to treat. Click override and start. Okay. Now I have a I have a look at the clock here, and I have a whole another set of uh, of slides talking about Spooky Central. But I'm wondering, um, we've already been going for an hour and a half. I wonder if we might um, take a break for a minute, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we start answering some questions um, because we don't want to lose people here. Let me just do this, and maybe do the central separately or another time or after this but i think people really want to be heard right now what do you think um so i'm seeing as yes you can definitely put two uh samples in one would you share slide 30 40 30? i can i can share the entire slide with you i can we can probably upload this into the facebook group the whole presentation and then it's in there and then you guys can take a look. Right, I'm going to give that to Echo later or to Sam later and then you guys can just upload that. Can you run terrain when you're sick and on antibiotics? Um, again, remember, nobody here is a doctor. Uh, you need to find out yourself. Um, go gentle is what I would do. If I feel that I need to do this right now, then I would um, do it and I would go gentle and I would see how my body reacts. The last thing you need to be is more sick, right? So take breaks and, uh, and see what happens. I don't use Facebook. Can the slides be emailed to us? Um, that's up to you guys, whatever you want to do. But, but honey, um, who, who, I don't know who doesn't use Facebook. I just saw this. Libra Pinchat. Um, no, Julia, uh, you're missing out on the Facebook piece in a big way, uh, on the support, just saying. Um, I, I know not everybody likes Facebook for good reason, but if you only use it to access the forum, um, there are plenty of forums that are good for you and that answer a lot of questions. It might be a good idea to join it just for that. Choice is yours, but um, that's where people are hanging out and where a lot of people are really helping. Yeah, we can do central another time. I think people are full and this is a good, good place to stop because it gives you an introduction, right? I think what you're realizing hopefully is that, um, what is the Facebook forum group? Huh. No, it's a Facebook group and it's the forum. Remember, you know what? I give you an exercise. Um, Google spooky Two forum and you will get there. Okay, it's as simple as that. You really just put spooky two in and, and everything is beautifully linked. So you can find it there, but you can also go to the spooky two dash mall.com website and it's linked there. And I want to say it's in the other website as well, right? Should be in the spooky two website is the form as well. 
Okay. Um, can we discuss the biofeedback? Yes, we can, but not now. And the reason is because we already fire host you for an hour and a half. And um, the, the whole, the, the point would be to make sure that you guys all grab and hold dearly whatever it is that you're using for a device right now and take a deep breath and start loving your machine and then start setting some goals. Okay. That's your next step right now. If you feel your next step is how to learn biofeedback, then you want to go to the website and you want to actually um, watch the video that teaches you that. There are hundreds of videos that show you how to do this. And this is empowering for you. We can absolutely do another uh, um, webinar on bio biofeedback and other things like that. That's not a problem at all. But also feel like you can, you can do this. You can find this out yourself. It's not complicated. Did you answer the distance questions? Regarding the road? Um, forums are gray. Penny, what do you think? Uh, uh, when uh, I saw not of uh, users asked uh, the question about the distance of remote, they want to know how uh, when they run remote, how um how long the walking distance well here's the cool thing right so when something is together it's together no matter how big the difference remember i said um my daughter is in germany and i'm in new hampshire on the east coast right um yeah. there is it's just not separated is the point so when you put your when you when you have your remote running here in, in your, you know, wherever you have it running and you travel to a different country, that doesn't mean it's all of a sudden separated because it's not. Okay. So there is no limit there. You can, it's, your remote is always, your remote, your DNA, your DNA is always your DNA. And what you do to your DNA will always impact you. It doesn't matter where you are. Your DNA is your unique code. Okay, this is where you're coded as a person. This is what, what tells you if you you know, have dark hair or blonde hair, if you are tall or short. This is what makes you you. And, it's, it's, and, and, and it will always do that. And if we have a sample of you, we have you. Right? Um, try it out. It's cool. So what else do we have for questions? Um, can you discuss how to do the biofeedbacks? Oh, that was a biofeedback. I mean, we can certainly go there. Oh, by the way, really quick, you guys, um, before I forget, the, um, you, you can get a discount coupon for this webinar, right? Just put your email address in there and people will s uh, send it out to you. Okay, that's nice to know because it is an investment and if you want to buy one, you might as well get a discount. So um, let me see what else. How can we delete old presets that we've made? answer the um well you can you can well you know what um in you in the user tab that's where you delete your old presets right if you want to yeah yeah so you go to your use to your users this is difficult for me to to explain this to you right now because i'm actually on my mac using uh, the iOS software, which means I can't just switch over and show you my the other desktop. Um, when we do this again, um, and we want to actually show the software, we want to have to do this in a different way so that you can actually take a look at the software through the webinar. But right now that's only possible with pictures. Okay. Um, okay, let me just see, sign up for the forum. There's some questions for the forum. Spooky to Asama, oh, which Facebook, please? Spooky to, Spooky to. Um, well, Sama is is a is an absolutely phenomenal educational program that Spooky to uh, puts up and that John White does. Um, so um, you, yeah, you find all the recordings there. You know, you guys, you have to understand something. This is there is so much to learn and so much information that it's really difficult to 
to dumb it down. You know, it's kind of like the cat is out of the box. You can do all these different things and you need to find places for different information. And I think that's what confuses people sometimes, which is why your way to deal with this problem is to go back to the beginning, to set your own goal, to decide what do I want to use this for? Okay. And then go from there and only use it for what you want to use it for and use the spooky two website. Just watch the videos and you're in the, the beginner's video that says new to rifling. They're short. They're easy to understand. You see John White, which is really important. And, um, and, and your, your spooky do world will never be the same because you're learning what you need to learn as a beginner step by step by step and then you go and you you apply it and you go back and just take a little bit think about it how many how many weeks did you do drivers at before you were allowed to drive a car right it's kind of like that you want to get used to that but might as well step by step let's see what else we have does the program restart when you left off when you take a break do you actually, um, the question from Robin, I understand, does the program restart when you, where you left off? Um, Robin, I don't know if that, if you mean terrain. Um, so there's actually, there, let me just say another thing. There's actually, there are actually a different ways of stopping a program. You can hold it, you can stop it, you can pause it, and you can hold it. Okay. Um, stopping means you just stop. And the next time you, you click start, you start from the beginning. Okay. P um, holding means you repeat the frequency you're on. So let's say there are 10 frequencies and you hold it on frequency number seven, number seven is going to run and that's all. And pausing means you, you stop the process, but not the program itself, which means you just click on unpause. And, it's, and it continues where you paused it. This is something I do, for example, when I do my rifing with, um, with my central because it takes, the programs I run take five, six hours to run a day and I do need to use the restroom. So, you know, so I just go on pause. Then I turn off my, my central. I take my whatever it is that I'm using. I take that off. I take my pause. I come back. I turn the central back on and I click on unpause and I'm done. Right. And you can you can pause a program for days if you want to. There is a way to actually restart a program if your computer breaks down. Um, and that's also not for today. But I want you to know that you can Google this or you can go to the Facebook group and they will let you know. Um, there is a very short video that shows you what you need to do in order to continue your terrain program if, if your computer ever you know, throws you out. By the way, really quickly, it's a good idea to run your computer offline. If you use it only for spooky, which is another good idea, um, then just, just don't use it online because Windows 10 will do automatic uploads and every time it does it, it shuts your system down. Very frustrating and very unnecessary and very annoying, right? So, okay. What else do we have? Can you do terrain while breastfeeding? I don't think why not. I know that they don't recommend to do um, rifing while you have a baby. Breastfeed, actually, well, this, this could be an answer for a medical doctor. It could be, I give you my personal opinion, and that's not a medical advice at all, but my thought would be that you have toxins in your system and that you don't want to have these toxins in your breast milk. So I take back what I said before and say the opposite. Um, you don't want to have toxins in your system. And you don't want to have toxins in your breast milk, and you don't want to detox while your baby is, is uh, taking up on that. The parents are healing through my DNA? No. Um, Tatiana, if you, if you have your parents' nails, or DNA sample, then yes. But if you have yours, then you kind of have yourself on the remote. And if you want your parents on the remote, it goes to your parents. So it does not intersect there. Um, okay, what else do we have for questions? Would be good to have another webinar. Yeah, Fiona, um, I'm going to show that you. This is not actually that hard. 
okay you say it's daunting but it's only daunting if you try to open up the car and look under the hood and then get the screwdriver and see what happens okay that's when it's daunting you can do this once you you know if you ever feel the need to do that go for it but that's just not why people buy cars and drive around with them you buy it for a purpose you want to heal you want to get rid of stuff you want to work on different levels and you now know that everything in your life is either killing or healing that's a good solid foundation for you to begin with work with that for as long as you're comfortable play around with it see how you react and then build up from there and as you work with those um with a blog post and you watch a video here and you see other questions, um, you know, you can then make a decision. Do I need to know this right now? Yes or no. You know, ultimately this is your system and you get to do what's right for you. Okay. And I see some people put their email addresses in there, which is awesome. That is great. So everybody who puts their email address in there is getting a discount coupon um, for this restore oh hold on um linda asked a question it's on the top restore default um i'm looking at my own system here right now hold on i believe you're talking about global no i don't think you're talking about global i'm not really sure what you mean by restore default um, there is a tab when you look at the very top uh, uh, over your tabs there is a little thing that says global and what that means is that whatever you do in there actually impacts all of your all of your generators so I have a whole bunch of generators over here and usually for example if I want to shut everything off I click on um, I click on pause and then I click on unpause okay or if I for example if you if you uh, update your software what you do is you go there and you click on pause and then you update the software and then you click on resume and then it just keeps running and you don't lose where you were at in the programs and all of that good stuff so that's what the global tab is for I don't know if that answered your questions Any question okay more people want a want a coupon that's great do the same guidelines for 10 pet placements apply to the socks and gloves? Um, you know, I was actually wondering this too, Penny, and I'm not even sure if you know the answer for that. Um, can people put the, um, the sleeves, can they actually put these over their joints? Yeah, they can. So, because we usually don't recommend to put the tense pads on the joint, do you? But but with the sleeves, it's okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. I I want to tell you. I mean, I I use mine right right here on my wrist, and I never had a problem with that. And that's a joint. You know. So, um, how do you turn off a generator in the control tab? You click on stop. It's as simple as that. So Sandy asked that question. So you go to control, you find the generator you want to stop, and then you click on stop. And if you want to completely turn it off, then you need to turn off the machine and not just the program, which means you actually go to the back of the little generator and just click that little black button to the left, and then the machine is off. Okay. Eric says it's a real PhD to learn. So is it to build a car. Now the question is, do you want to drive or do you want to learn how to build it? Um, if you want to learn, if you want to drive, you choose what you want to do. You choose the right programs. Then you decide, do I, is, do I need to kill something off that's in my body or do, do I want to do something else? You choose a John White program, JW. You load the programs onto that. You click override generator and you start. That's what most people do and all the rest comes later okay and the biofeedback and all that is also just a click of a button you put your tense pads here you click on biofeedback you load it in the generator and you do biofeedback it's really that simple it is not complicated you know um it just it, you i really want you guys to understand the system is very simple they're really just these three components and anything that's in the presets tab 
is ready to use. Okay, sometimes in the cancer program, for example, you want to replace some of the placeholders with your own values. So you have a, you know, so you can customize it so it works for you specifically with your biofeedback results. Um, but generally speaking, if it's in the presets tab, all you need to do is you place your tense pads wherever you want them to be. You click on what you want to do, you load it in the generator, and you click start, or you click scan. Biofeedback, obviously, scan. That's it. Done. Okay, so um, don't let this discourage you. Um, Lib uh, Liba says, where's Terrain? Well, Terrain is a detox program, so it's under detox. Frequencies graph shows 62, I wouldn't even know what that means. Can you, can you see this with Sandy Martin's question? Frequencies graph shows 62027. Uh, what does this mean? I think uh, she, um, they sh should be do by feedback scan. When do by feedback scan, um, the, graph, the graph will show the uh, oh. frequency is uh, scanning. Um, okay, so it's basically just what it, what it threw out as a biofeedback. You know what that yeah. means? Look, you're running all these frequencies through your body, and this is where your body went bling and said, I need this, this one. That's all it means. And it does not necessarily mean that there's a disease behind it. It just means your body needs that frequency right now. Okay? Um, some people really, they're really big on, on uh, reverse lookup because they want to know what they're sick from. But you have to see this differently. Um, these, these little blips, these frequencies that it throws out, see them more like a symptom, okay? Like, okay, I have a headache. A headache doesn't mean you have a tumor, right? A headache doesn't mean you have, you have um, a traumatic brain injury. It doesn't mean you have a concussion. A headache means your head hurts. And all the frequency set is that your head hurts. And this is the way to fix that, right? So some people go back and say, oh my God, my head hurts. I think I have brain cancer and, and, and a concussion and a traumatic brain injury and I fell on the stairs and the other thing happened and I'm probably toxic. That's just not what that means. And that's why they usually just say, say you know, yes, these frequencies show up in programs that we know. That's true, right? Because you just know that if you have a traumatic brain injury, chances are you have a headache but it doesn't go the other way, right? Very rarely does it go the other way. Um, so if it shows up as a frequency, good for you, just run it, as simple as that. Um, yeah, use it, to show with your kid, I would always use it, why not? I use it on my cats, actually. I clip their, nail, their, their claws and use it on the cat and she felt much better. Um, And I think we should, um, I see so many more messages, but I think we should probably call it a day because we went for two hours and people must be tired and exhausted. Okay, somebody says use masking tape, not paper tape. Uh, 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 paper tape, not masking tape. Um, that is true. Does the program check hormones or vitamin levels? I would assume that you talk about biofeedback. Here's my answer it checks your frequencies, it checks what you need, okay? Remember your body is a vibrating being and it just checks what you need right now. I don't know if that's a, if that is a pro, if that is a, 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 a vitamin, if that's something else. Um, biofeedback just makes sure that you on a vibrational level, your body gets what it needs at the time. Right, and if something is out of sync, if something doesn't work right for you, um, then your body will tell, and you can. And this is the genius, beautiful thing: you can use your Gen X, you plug it in there, you put a tense bed left and right, and you run it, or you put it, your DNA into your remote, and you run that, and uh, try it out. It's really, really powerful. It's, it's really powerful stuff. Um, so yeah, there are. Hold on, one, here's a feeling frustrated as I don't understand when I pick from the programs, for example, for knee pain, how do I get it to run? Okay, Shelly, um, you just asked a question, so I assume you're still there. It's the same thing. Knee pain, 
If you know that knee pain is caused by a virus or a bacteria, you use killing. Okay. If you think you have an infection, that's not caused by a critter probably. And I'm saying this as a non-medical doctor. I don't know why your knee is hurting. Okay. Then you use, you go to the presets tab, which is the one on the very left. And you go all the way down to the empty shell. And you choose if you want to use contact, you click on contact and then you decide if you want to kill or if you want to heal. If in doubt, I would probably use healing. Okay. Um, that's my understanding. Right, Penny? If, if we're in doubt, we should use healing. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So yeah, I learned something. I learned from the best. So what can I say? <laughs> you guys are awesome. Um, okay. So if in doubt, use healing. Okay. And if something needs to be killed off, the program is probably going to do that anyways. It's just a little bit better if you use a killing thing. So you use, you use a preset on the very left. You say, I want to either use John White's killing or John White's healing. Then you go to the tab over and you put in the word knee. Okay. Just spell out the word knee. And then you click on search. There's a little search button. You, you can see that. I want to say it's the, let me just look at my software here. It's the, the next one over, right? Yeah. Yep. It's the, it's, it's the first one next to the search window. You just click on that and it's going to show you all the different knee things that there are. Okay. And you just scroll through and you make some decisions about what you want to do and uh, which ones you want to try out. There are different reasons to try them out. Some because they're shorter, some because the description seems to fit better. Maybe if you think you have an infection, you want to Google, you want to put in infection and, uh, and just go from there. Oh, here's something. If you want to take a note, you can probably Google this too. It's called Spooky Frequency Sources. And this is, of course, the other way around. Spooky Frequency Sources. And what that means is that it tells you what all the little abbreviations are for. The BFB and the bio and the BPs and the CAFLs. Um, those are descriptions of how these programs were created or by whom they were created. And so uh, some people that's important to know. Okay, uh, to make a choice. Is this a program that is experimental? Is this a program that's very well known? Um, so spooky frequency sources, and you will see um, you will see what those uh, what those abbreviations mean. And if I'm not mistaken, that should also be in the files chapter in the on the Facebook group. So um, let's see, maybe a little bit more. Ignore besides the Windows program requirement. Do I need a lot of memory on my laptop? No, you don't. This does not use a lot of memory. You know, just use a computer. I mean, um, it, clearly, if you have a better computer, it's going to run a little better, a little stronger, but it's not a program that is going to bring your computer to its knees. That's my experience. Do you have any technical reps available in the Los Angeles, California area? No. Uh, but you don't need help to set this up. What do you need help for? Okay, so it's really easy to set this up. You download the software, you take your generator, seriously, you take your generator, you take your power cable, which I can't pull out here, you plug the power in here, you plug the USB in here, you plug the other side of the USB into your computer and the thing is ready to go. <laughs> it's really that simple. If you have a Gen X, you need to turn it on before you start the software. Oh, I didn't mention that. Sorry. But here's the thing. The, um, the, you need to start, the, the, when, the, when the software starts, it sees which generators it can, uh, it can use. Okay? And the, which means the generators all need to be turned on before you start your software. Okay. Um, otherwise it says, I don't find anything and it just goes into test mode and then you have to turn it back off. If your software for some reason doesn't find your generators, that happens with me sometimes with the Gen X, I just, I just turn it off and turn it on and I do that a few times and eventually it finds it. Don't ask me why that happens, but it happens sometimes, not as often as it used to though. So something happened there that makes it better. Um, what should we do after 11 day terrain? Should we go on the core phase two organisms? Where do we find that? Amelia, that's a complicated question. It depends on what you want to do. Um, if, you, if you want to run, if this question is related to either Lyme or cancer or any programs like that, which are whole systems, 
it just it's a whole process that you go through then instead of terrain you can just start with the cancer program in the beginning because it basically has terrain as its first step okay and uh, the lime program as far as i know has that too so you you just go to there you just click on the lime and you start um with the detox that they suggest over there and then you just keep going from there um the choices are specifically noted as to which mode of transportation to use. When in programs, there is no notation of them. No, that's true. The programs don't tell you anything about the transportation. The programs can, the programs can be used um, in different ways. You can, the program is a frequency, remember that. Okay, so you can put that into your remote, you can put it into your contact, you can put it into your plasma, you can put it into your scalar, you can put it into your PMF coil, you know, a whole different system. We didn't talk about that today, but Google it or we talk about it some other time. The programs don't have anything to do with that. The program is just frequencies straightforward. That's all it is. Okay. So you don't, if, if it's in the program step, you can use it probably with, with any device that you have. Okay. All right. I think we are, we have stretched this as far as we can. Um, it's we, we've gone for two hours, um, but I'm getting from what I'm seeing is that uh, that people did get something out of it. Penny, can I email you to see what system would be best to start with? Um, Penny, though, the question is for you. Okay, everyone can email me. <laughs> um, tell us when you can see how much. Yeah. So you guys really, um, first of all, uh, we had huge attendance tonight and, uh, that's a testimony to your dedication. Um, if, and a long webinar like this, uh, people are still here, <laughs> you know, <laughs> power to you, <laughs> you know, good for you. Um, you know, everybody here is, is here to help. Um, you will see that in the Facebook group. There are lots of volunteers that are happy to help with whatever they can. Um, one request, please. Don't ever yell at them. They're volunteers. And don't yell at the other people either. Some people really do that and it's hurtful. Um, people just do their best in their free time and they're helping out. And the team is doing their best. Um, going above and beyond, really making sure that you have something that can help you heal. Okay, we're on this together. If you know something, share it with the group. And uh, if others know something, they will share it with you. Um, Facebook has a way to, there's a, there's a search window in Facebook. Chances are, if you had the problem, if you have a problem, somebody else had it before. Put in the search function first. See what the answers were. If those are enough for you, good for you. Just do what they suggest. Um, that's how I found out that my um, virus software was a word, word I couldn't find before. Why my virus software giving funny messages? I literally just use the funny message of the virus software, put it into the search and search window and Facebook, and I got three answers about what to do. So I didn't have to bother somebody in their free time and ask for a fourth time what needs to be done. Um, use all that, be nice to people, and um, ask questions when you really have them and make sure you use your machine because you're sitting on something that's really pretty, pretty amazing. Um, and we haven't even really started to get into the, into the, all the amazingness of it. And I think we're all already pretty much in awe. So, um, thank you all. Thank you, Penny, for being amazing and smart and helping and doing this and, um, preparing so much for this. And, um, yeah. Uh, any last words? Oh, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dear, say hi to everybody over there and thank you for all the amazing work that they do. And um, yeah, we see you next time. Yeah. Thank you for, for you, Ingrid. We'll see you later. Yeah.